we have an object moving in a circle. In this particular case, it's just a car, it doesn't really matter. An object moving in a circle, uh, it has a radius r, so we're gonna assume it's a constant radius, and we're gonna assume that the magnitude of the velocity is constant so that we have uniform circular motion as we just talked about. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna derive the equation for centripetal acceleration, the fact that it's equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. That's our job right here. So it starts out like this. We know the definition of acceleration. Uh, average acceleration, Christina, the equation is? Like so. Uh, velocity it's close, but we're missing an important piece here, Isha. Change in velocity over change in time. Change in velocity over change in time. Yes, they're vectors, but that's the change in that's very important. In other words, this is final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time final minus time initial. Again, remember we're assuming the angular acceleration is equal to zero and we have some vectors here. So this is at one particular point in time. We have the position would be the position initial. That would be when it's located right there. We have then a short while later position final, which is going to be right here. When it's gone from position to position, initial to position final, it's gone through some change in theta, some angular displacement. It also has gone through a linear displacement. That linear displacement is this vector right here and is delta r. So we have our velocity initial and our velocity final, which are illustrated right here, velocity initial and velocity final, which are both located right there. Now, it's important to identify what types of velocities these are, velocity initial and velocity final. Anna, they are called? The initial and final velocities are called, they have a specific name when you're, the velocity when you're moving in a circle. Um, 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 tangential. tangential velocity. Considering the fact that they are tangential velocity, this initial velocity vector has an angle relative to the initial position vector. What is that angle, Cynthia? The angle right here. Um, is it not it's okay. By definition, Benedict, it must be. It's a right angle. Has to be a right angle, right? Because this velocity, by definition, that tangential velocity, and this is the radius. Therefore, the angle between the initial velocity and the initial position has to has to be 90 degrees. And the angle between the velocity final and the position final also has to be 90 degrees. So we can also draw this triangle which is the velocity initial and the velocity final. Basically, I'm taking this vector and this vector and drawing them over here. And we have then our change in velocity. And notice, because we have 90 degree angles between the initial and final vectors here, that these two are similar triangles, right? These two triangles, this triangle and this triangle must be similar. Therefore, we can identify, uh, actually let's do this first. Therefore, uh, let's do a couple things. We know the magnitude of the initial position is equal to the magnitude of the final position. By definition, because this is a uniform circular motion, so the radius is not changing. We also know that the magnitude of the initial velocity is equal to the magnitude of the final velocity because it is a constant angular acceleration, or it's the angular acceleration is zero. Therefore, the velocity is not changing magnitude. It's changing direction, but not magnitude. Therefore, we can replace uh, position initial and position final with just an r, and velocity initial and velocity final with just a v as far as magnitudes are concerned. In addition to that, notice that the change in velocity must be directed inward toward the center of the circle. So the change in velocity is directed inward towards the center of the circle. So we have similar triangles, which means that the 
change in velocity divided by the velocity. In other words, this side divided by any, either one of the two sides, because they have the same magnitude, is equal to the change in position over the position. Now, I do understand my v's and my r's sometimes kind of fade together. So realize this is the change in velocity over velocity. This is the change in position over position, because they're similar triangles. Therefore, we can say that the change in velocity is equal to the change in position multiplied by the velocity divided by the radius of the circle. Okay, coming back to the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity over change in time. Well, I can substitute in for the change in velocity the concept of delta r, the change of position, multiplied by the velocity, divided by the radius. In other words, the acceleration is equal to the velocity divided by the radius multiplied by the change in position over change in time. Change in position over change in time. Change in position over change in time. Gosh, class, what's that? Velocity. What kind? Average. In this particular case, it's an average velocity. So let's let delta t approach zero. As delta t gets closer and closer to zero, we can replace this with the acceleration equals velocity over r with dr dt. And what is dr dt class? Instantaneous velocity. So this is velocity divided by time multiplied by velocity, or if you prefer, velocity squared, I'm sorry, velocity squared divided by the radius. In other words, the acceleration when moving in a circle in uniform circular motion is, is directed inward and has a magnitude of the velocity squared divided by the radius, that velocity being the velocity along the tangent to the circle. Hence, tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Andrew? How come when, um, when change in time approaches zero, that uh, change in r over change in time fraction doesn't approach infinity? It's the definition of taking the limit and the derivative. I'm not going to go, that's really a question for your math class. I, I don't, we don't have enough time to go all the way into that. But that has to do with the definition of the derivative of position as a function of time. And as delta t goes to zero, this approaches what's called the RDT. Okay. 